the other $10,000 bet I made kind of recently, and that was self-driving cars at like a level five running around uh, cities. And people have kind of nitpicked that, that we probably don't mean exactly level five, but the guy I'm having the bet with I is we're going to be, we know what we mean about this. Jeff Atwood. And, yeah. Coding horror and coding stack horror. overflow and all. Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah, I mean, it's just, he doesn't think that people are going to be riding around in robo taxis in 2030 uh, in major cities, just like, like you take an Uber now. And, and I think, think it will. You think it will. And I think, and the difference is everybody looks at this, it's like, oh, but Tesla has been wrong for you. They've been promising it for years and it's not here yet. And the reason this is different than the bet with Mars is Mars really is more than is comfortable a bet on Elon Musk. I am, you know, that is, you know, that is his thing. And he is really going to move heaven and earth to try to, to make that happen. And perhaps not even SpaceX. Yeah. Perhaps just Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if if Elon went away and SpaceX went public and got a board of directors, I there are more profitable things they could be doing than focusing on human presence on Mars. So this really is a sort of personal thing there. And in contrast with that, self-driving cars have a dozen credible companies working really hard. And while, yes, it's going slower than most people thought it would, betting against that is a bet against almost the entire world in terms of all of these companies that have all of these incentives. It's not just, you know, one guy's passion project. I... And I do think that it is solvable. I although there's I recognize it's not a hundred percent chance because it's possible the long tail of self-driving problems winds up being an AGI complete problem. Uh, I think there's plenty of value to mine out of it with narrow AI. And I think that it's you know it's going to happen probably more so than people expect. But it's that whole sigmoid curve where you over, you know, you overestimate the near-term progress and you underestimate the long-term progress. And I think self-driving is going to be like that. And I think 2030 is still a pretty good bet. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, um, self-driving is a problem that uh, is safety critical, meaning that if if you don't do it well, people get hurt. But the other side of that is people are terrible drivers. So well, it is not going to be, that's probably going to be the argument that gets it through is like, we can save 10,000 lives a year by taking imperfect self-driving cars and letting them take over a lot of driving responsibilities. It's I, like, was it 30,000 people a year yeah, die right. in auto accidents right now in America? And a lot of those are preventable. And the problem is you'll have people that every time a Tesla crashes into something, you've got a bunch of people that literally have vested interest shorting Tesla to come out and make it the worst thing in the world. And people will be fighting against that. But optimist in me again, I think that we will have systems that are statistically safer than human drivers, and we will be saving thousands and thousands of lives every year when we can hand over more of those responsibilities to it. I do still think as a person who studied this problem very deeply from a human side as well, it's still an open problem how good slash bad humans are driving. It's a kind of funny thing we say about each other. Oh, humans suck at driving. Um, everybody except mm -hmm. you, of course, like we think we're good at driving. But I, after really studying it, I, I, I think you start to notice, you know, cause I've watched uh, hundreds of hours of humans driving with the projects of this kind of thing. You've noticed that even with the distraction, even with everything else, humans are able to, to do some incredible things. With the, the with the attention, even when you're just looking at the smartphone, just to get cues from the environment, to make last second decisions, to use instinctual type of decisions that actually save your ass time and time and time again, and are able to do that with so much uncertainty around you in such tricky dynamic environments. I don't know. I don't. I don't know exactly um, how hard is it to beat that kind of skill of common sense reasoning. So this almost. is one of those interesting things that there have been a lot of studies about how 
experts in their field usually underestimate the progress that's going to happen mm. because an expert thinks about all the problems they deal with. And they're like, damn, I'm going to have a hard time solving all of this. And they filter out the fact that they are one expert in a field of thousands. Mm -hmm. And you know, you think about, yeah, I can't do all of that. And you sometimes forget about the scope of the, the ecosystem that you're embedded in. And if you think back eight years, very specifically, the state of AI and machine learning, where was that we we had just gotten ResNets probably at that point. And you look at all the amazing magical things that have happened in eight years. And they do kind of seem to be happening a little faster in recent years also. And you project that eight more years into the future, where again, I think there's a 50% chance we're gonna have signs of life of AGI, you know, which we can put through driver's ed if we need to to actually build self-driving cars. And I think that the narrow systems are going to to have real value demonstrated well before then.